good morning and thank you Eurojust for organizing this webinar. It uh, has uh, really given me an opportunity to think about impact indeed from the prosecutor, prosecutor's perspective. Uh, so my name is Susanna Liskova. I'm the head of impact support team here at Europol, indeed in the sunny Hague, so that's quite exceptional. And uh, I'm uh, very pleased that uh, uh, my input can uh, follow after such a such excellent uh, introduction and information from Bostian Skrilet, because I can actually link it up nicely with what was said uh, till now. So I will also share uh, my presentation with you. And indeed, uh, I will do my best to highlight what are the opportunities for prosecutors. Uh, I will start with a bit of a summary how MPAC works so that you can also see for yourself how do I as a prosecutor would fit into it. So that will be a little bit of a usually boring part. Uh, then I will uh, tell you something what's going on actually right now, how we as Europol support MPAC. And then I will uh, come back to the main point about prosecutors in MPAC. If we read this sentence slowly, it actually gives you the full picture about the impact. It has now become a permanent and key EU instrument. For which purpose? For structured multidisciplinary cooperation. And what's the subject? Is the fight against organized and serious international crime, which is driven by the member states and is supported by EU institutions, bodies, and agencies. To look at it from the same angle but maybe what's behind the letters again like Bostian already introduced when we say it's European it is driven by the EU member states and as I said also EU entities uh, but it does not mean that non-EU countries are not there they are very important partners because the EU security of course is very much linked with, with uh, cooperation with partners in order to really tackle the threat. I don't need to go far away. For examples, when we speak about the drugs, the cocaine trafficking, it's inevitable that we need good cooperation with partners outside Europe. M stands for multidisciplinary. That's exactly why we are here today, because it's not only police, it's not only law enforcement. It offers the same opportunities also for prosecutors, but also for uh, entities outside law enforcement, outside prosecution, so outside the criminal justice, it impact also means uh, to tackle the crime from the perspective like prevention, like administrative approach. Uh, so it offers full spectrum of ways how to tackle the crime. So that's the multi. P stands for platform. And that's what sometimes make impact a little bit uh, less uh, popular because indeed it has its structure, it has its uh, methodology, it has its uh, format. So one has to understand how it works in order to benefit. So, but the good thing is it's a platform. So it, it's uh, not in the virtual space. It's it's the real thing. It comes with real people, it comes with meeting rooms, it comes with funding, it comes with certain way of working so that you know how it goes uh, during the year and during the four years. So that's the solidity of the platform. And then the last uh, three letters to ACT, it indeed applies a so-called integrated approach. So it's not just once the crime has happened, once you have to prosecute, it is also to look at uh, the reasons for crime, the, to tackle the prevention and um, also the training and also innovation uh, to have new tools, how to help uh, that the crime either does not happen or is mitigated and how to help the victims also. So it's the full spectrum of one who think what goes around. Uh, as was mentioned by Bostian, it, it has its four-year structure, so I will not dwell on this too much. Uh, the serious and organized crime threat assessment. The participant has left the meeting. Indeed, and prepared by Europol in cooperation with many partners. Uh, then the policy setting, which now we have the 10 priorities to be delivered via 15 operational action plans. Uh, which all of them have common structure, which is given in the in the multi-annual strategic plan. 
And then we have the operational action plans. That's exactly what's happening now. They are annual. Yesterday we had the first uh, first workshop. Also, Eurojust colleague was there. Uh, and this is uh, the the thing which is more practical when uh, the colleagues are putting together the list of specific operational actions which will be delivered, which will be implemented during next year. Then at the end of these four years, we have an evaluation which gives us a very good uh, lesson learned exercise when we can also change things uh, for the next uh, season. This is again uh, because we like visuals. This is uh, these four steps, how it how it works. The 10 EU crime priorities, you can see it's 10 priorities and some of them have uh, sub priorities or sub focus. Uh, this applies for drugs and fraud. There you see uh, there you see for drugs, uh, two. Two areas and for fraud five. Uh, so this mathematic makes out of 10 priorities, 15 operational action plans. And again, if you look at it, uh, you would not know it's for police, it's for law enforcement. This is uh, very much applicable also for prosecutors. Uh, the crime is prosecuted, so the crime priorities indeed apply uh, for, for all the actors. Who is who? We hear very often the terminology in impact and uh, I just uh, put here the very few examples of, of the main main terms. The council, that's the political level uh, who uh, adopts the council conclusions which start the whole four years. Uh, so that's the top level council. Mm, of course, you, you know uh, what's behind. Uh, then we have COSI, is the committee, permanent committee on cooperation on let me look into my notes because we always say only cozy. Standing Committee on Operational Cooperation. Uh, that's the body which is uh, really uh, looking closer to what MPAC is doing. Is uh, we are reporting towards cozy and cozy is uh, adopting a couple of documents, the MPAC terms of reference, also this general mass, the annual operational action plans, JAT concept, joint action days concept. So COSI has a very uh, good oversight uh, what's going on in impact. European Commission has various roles. Uh, my colleague uh, Antoine will tell you more details. So only the few of them. Indeed, the multi-annual strategic plan, also provisions for funding and very important complementarity with other EU policies. Then the second group is more visible on a daily basis. Each country has a national EMPA coordinator. Here I would like to highlight that this is usually for the time being indeed in the law enforcement area because EMPA, as it started 10 years ago, uh, was mostly embraced for the start by the police. And this is indeed the question also for the future here uh, towards the prosecutors, whether there will be um, national EMPA coordinator reaching out also to prosecutors or whether prosecutors would indeed evolve and create um, their own sub-national EMPA coordinator. So we need to also think uh, then practically how, how to adjust the, the structure so that it really works, really works and um, the structure provides for having prosecutors properly involved. So currently it's usually somebody you can be found in, in the police structures. Uh, the terminology, we speak about relevant actors when we mean EU entities, EU member states and EU institutions, uh, agencies. And we speak about partners when we mean non-EU countries, international organizations like Interpol, private sector, EU networks or anybody else. And then the most practical terminology is the related to the operational action plan. So we have 15 operational action plans. Each of them has a leader. This leader is called the driver. So driver is effectively a leader of the operational action plan. And then each operational action plans consists of usually approximately 20 operational actions. Again, they have action leaders. And here is the place for uh, either Eurojust or prosecutors at the national level, you can become a leader of operational action if you propose one. So 
Uh, I have heard that already for next year we do have some actions where Eurojust is action leader and we hope this will then evolve further uh, in, the, in the next years. We as Europol, we do provide quite a massive support for MPAC. So sometimes we are associated with MPAC uh, a little bit, I would say, too much. Uh, but we are not the owners of it. We are one of the parties who are contributing. We do the EU SOCTA. Uh, we provide uh, operational analytical support for all these MPAC operational actions as necessary. We also provide, and that's important, uh, the technical infrastructure, which is used for uh, a secure information exchange called Siena. Uh, that's currently very well developed uh, network, uh, which also Eurojust has access to. And I know there is initiative about digital justice. So the question is open how uh, that will be working on the prosecutor side. What would be your tool for your secure information exchange? So uh, MPAC currently is using very much uh, Siena. Uh, and in this uh, network, we have also partners. We have also countries who have access to Siena, for example, Israel, Georgia, uh, Albania, Australia, Canada. Uh, you can see the network of Europol partners on our website. So it's much uh, more than just the EU countries. What we do and uh, what's my role is the MPAC support team. We have specific, uh, specific tasks which uh, make sure that the machinery is running smoothly. Uh, so we help the drivers uh, in their role. We facilitate now the OAP drafting, the operational action plans uh, drafting, and further during the year also the implementation and monitoring of the progress. We as Europol also uh, are the guardians or the providers of so-called Europol, uh, sorry, impact grants. That's very dedicated funding, which can be used uh, for the operational actions. Uh, that you can also uh, find on our website and on our platform for experts. Uh, MPAC funding, MPAC grants are part of the whole package of funding which can be used in order to implement an operational action. So this is just uh, a part of it. But we have noticed very good practices that the drivers are utilizing also the internal security funding. So when we speak about uh, MPAC funding, this is one very dedicated and specific uh, stream, but there are various other sources uh, which can be used, including the Eurojust uh, funding for the JIT, for JIT. So that's also one good example. We always mention that the drivers should look around and find multiple uh, sources uh, for funding. And we also do a bit of corporate communication, of course, uh, like uh, many other agencies and Eurojust. And this is actually one of the examples. The MPEG family is, is big, 27 EU member states, then EU entities who are uh, listed in a specific document. I have uh, highlighted uh, some of them which are there now for the next four years. You recognize the abbreviation, so I, I don't uh, go through that. And then for MPAC partners, uh, that's also a big family which is growing and we indeed would like to facilitate also that even though one has to keep in mind uh, what's the legal situation, whether we have uh, cooperation agreements with them, whether we have technical infrastructure, whether we have somebody to talk to. So the relatively easy group and very accessible is uh, the group of EU networks. There we have uh, contact points. Uh, then uh, we have, uh, for the time being, in the M in the operational actions plans for this year, I counted, and we have there 34 non-EU countries. This number is not uh, something what cannot change. It depends on the interest. It depends on uh, how we reach out to them or how they make themselves visible. So this figure will be, of course, different each year depending on the engagement. And then we have also uh, entities which do not fall under one umbrella. Uh, so there are various uh, projects, uh, initiatives, EU mission in the 
in, in the UPAM is one of the examples. Interpol, so you see, I wanted to illustrate on this that empath is really very colorful. Uh, there are various entities who can contribute, who can do something, and it's a lot about their own initiative and about our initiative, like EU member states, uh, to reach out to the existing structures and to utilize them to use the capacities of various projects uh, in order not to invent something in parallel, but make, make use of what's going on, what exists. And the impact provides the platform from that, so it connects. It, it makes indeed the bridges, and the, it bridges the gap between the EU and national crime strategies. I, I like the sentence from Bostian, because that's what the impact does. It's like a network, like a net, where you can connect already existing initiatives. So there is not always need to create something new. So this illustrates this year mainly, and uh, I'm curious to see what we will have for the OAPs 2022. Speaking about the prosecutors in impact, uh, the nature of operational action so far covers uh, various areas. So for example, the criminal intelligence picture. So that means we are doing activities which help to understand uh, what's going on. An example from the drug area uh, with drug seizures, uh, forensic forensic analysis uh, also generates the information uh, where the drug was produced. So if this information is put together, then when you have next seizure, you can see and you can make then a sort of a map indicating you the production. So this was one of the very practical actions in criminal intelligence picture. Uh, and simply by uh, putting this information together into one place and then utilizing it uh, helps other colleagues. So it's a very simple type of action. Uh, another group is uh, the investigations, the police uh, intelligence gathering, prosecutions. There I don't need to say more, I suppose. Just to highlight that the case uh, remains your case. It, it's not becoming impact case. You still operate in your jurisdiction. You still use uh, the criminal code of the country. The impact helps you to, for example, organize a meeting with your colleagues in another country because with the impact funding, not all of them have to ask their own administrations. They don't have to ask for multiple fundings in their countries. EMPA gives you actually this very practical support uh, which you can use and to communicate to your colleagues either via a meeting or, or um, it provides you financial possibilities also related uh, to uh, special investigative techniques. We have uh, also an area of actions which are uh, aiming at, at actions, um, so-called action days uh, to stop the flow of uh, illegal goods. So that's another group which is uh, very much related indeed to police because it's police or border police who will do the actual check, the action days. Uh, but then it doesn't stop there. It, it may generate prosecutions. Uh, so there again is place uh, for prosecutors. Uh, we have a big area which is related to money laundering. Again, I think you will figure out for yourself uh, that this is the area uh, for prosecutors and it's uh, just the method how to bring yourself uh, closer uh, to this. Document fraud, indeed, another activity, another area which was here already in the current cycle and it will continue. And then the areas like training, prevention, harm reduction, and engaging with not new partners. So all this uh, makes a big variety of impact actions. And uh, I'm confident that many of them can be utilized also by the prosecutors. How you find your way uh, into the impact um, jungle, into the impact circles? Uh, as it is happening now, it's uh, very often by uh, Eurojust national members. Uh, that's a perfect way. Eurojust as a new agency is among the relevant actors, um, has all the possibilities. So this is what works and uh, can only grow. So we are pleased about that. 
But actually, you as prosecutors, you are in sort of double position. You can also approach impact via your national structures. So as a representative of certain country, that would work via the impact national coordinator. And in that way, you can also become action leader. So you have, you have in your situation, two, two ways. Practically, it works uh, like this. Usually in June, we start, we invite uh, all relevant actors and some um, partners to propose action. So this has happened in June. Uh, now we are already in September. So if you would like to propose new action, then it's still time for it. Till 8th of October, the process goes on. Uh, but you can also do it next year and then you submit your proposal for operational actions, as I say, either via Eurojust or via national structures. And then once you are in, we will navigate you further and you will hear uh, from my colleagues about the funding, etc. You will meet uh, the other action leaders, you will meet the drivers, so then we will guide you through the process. And we are always very happy when there are new action leaders because it brings something new into MPAC. It's not just doing the same actions every year. We are very happy if there are new initiatives. And this is the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, this illustrates uh, one of the uh, fact sheets which we also produce. Uh, after the action plans are implemented, we also collect from the action leaders information about so-called results. Um, these are, of course, results which you can measure. So it's very often the number of kilos or tons of drugs which were seized. It's a number of international investigations or operations which were supported. So here you see the figure uh, from 2020. Um, I believe it's quite impressive and it shows and it illustrates the added value of MPAC that it has brought 2,737 international investigations or operations uh, together. So the colleagues who were working on that were working in a, in a synchronized way, in a collaborative way. So not only for their own country, but keeping in mind also the European dimension. And that's indeed the essence of MPAC. And we hope that uh, as we go through the years, uh, we will show more results, which also illustrate involvement of prosecutors. Uh, so to have the figures not very police oriented, but also figures which will demonstrate the, the input and the energy which the prosecutors put into it. It's of course, it's quite challenging to get these figures. So we know about that. Um, often we are asked uh, how many from the arrest, how many of those people have been prosecuted or have been even sentenced. Uh, we say we don't know. So that's something what maybe in a few years we would be able to display and then the fact sheet will, will look uh, even, even more impressive.